A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 21st day of May in 2021, and it is a gray, wet, thundering, and lightning day here in Dangriga. Uh, my only fear right this minute is that there seems to be fluctuation in the electricity every now and then, and I hope this does not affect our broadcast for this morning. By the grace of God, we will be able to complete what we have started. We're going to begin things this beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. It is Friday, and it's a beautiful day, no matter the weather. We're going to kick things off with one entitled, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. Let's have a listen.
That one there entitled Blessed Jesus at Thy Word, sung by the Choir of Christ Covenant Church. We're going to get our words here up on screen then for today, May the 21st. And we will have that in two, three, one. There we go. We continue with our opening sentence, and this will be followed by versicle one, which could be found on page 35 in our books of common prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, Christ or Passover. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 37. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all, and in living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we would have committed that might have been displeasing to God, that perhaps would have been unjust to our neighbors, or that even could have been unfair to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. At this time, we will have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm for this morning is Psalm 102. Let's have a listen. Psalm 102 Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke and my bones are as hot as burning coals. My heart is smitten like grass and withered so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skin and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and groan. I am like a sparrow, lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long, and those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have lifted me up and thrown me away. My days pass away like a shadow, and I wither like a grass. 
but you O Lord endure forever and your name from age to age you will arise and have compassion on Zion for it is time to have mercy upon her indeed the appointed time has come for your servants love her very rubble and are moved to pity even for her dust the nation shall fear your name O Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory for the Lord will build up Zion and his glory will appear he will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless he will not despise their plea let this be written for a future generation so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord for the Lord looked down from his holy place on high from the heavens he beheld the earth that he might hear the groan of the captive and set free those condemned to die that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and his praise in Jerusalem when the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord he has brought down my strength before my time he has shortened the number of my days and I said O oh my God do not take me away in the midst of my days your years endure throughout all generations. in the beginning O oh Lord you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands they shall perish but you will endure they shall wear out like a garment as clothing you will change them and they shall be changed but you are always the same and your years will never end the children of your servants shall continue and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 18, A Song to the Lamb. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 53. It is based on Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, and Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, as well as 13. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is and by your will they were created, and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb, that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed, for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Our Bible lesson for this morning is taken from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 17 through to 31. Let's have a listen. Good morning, everyone. The Old, the Old Testament lesson for this morning is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 17 through to 31. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? When you drink from clear water, must you foul the rest with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have fouled with your feet? Therefore, Thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, 
will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild animals from the land, so that they may live in the wild and sleep in the wood securely. I will make them and the region around my hill a blessing, and I will send down the showers in their season. They shall be showers of blessing. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield its increase. They shall be secure on their soil, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I break the bar of their yoke and save them from the hands of those who enslave them. They shall no more be plundered for the nations, nor shall the animals of the land devour them. They shall live in safety, and no one shall make them afraid. I will provide for them a splendid vegetation, so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land, and no longer suffer the insult of the nations. They shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our meditation this morning, we will take a look at Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 17 through to 31. And indeed, we ended up yesterday with Ezekiel chapter 18. And we have been doing recaps of the chapters in between. But because there are so many chapters between Ezekiel 18 and Ezekiel 34, I think we will not be able to do a summary of all of these chapters in between. But if you notice, Ezekiel chapter 34 does not begin for us this morning with verse 1. It actually begins at verse 17. So what we can do is we can begin at the beginning of Ezekiel 34 verse 1 and do a recap from there leading up <laughs> leading up to verse 17. And you know what? Ezekiel chapter 34 is talking about the shepherds and the sheep. And it's all about God's word to the shepherds of his people. Now, there is the accusation from God against the unfaithful shepherds of Israel. Remember that when Ezekiel began his prophecy, not even a decent leader could be found in order to guide the people in the way of right. So verses 1 and 2 talks about the accusation against the unfaithful shepherds. The idea of the shepherd <clears throat> pardon me, in, in, in the Near East often meant a prince or a king of the time. Joshua is a good example of a civil leader that was called a shepherd in the book of Numbers, as well as King Saul in 2 Samuel chapter 5, before he, of course, went cuckoo. And, of course, the idea here was that of one where a spiritual leader needed to be raised up among God's people. And before one is raised up, God is bringing an accusation against those who, have, who should have been leading and there is one particular line in the beginning of Ezekiel chapter 34, which talks about woe to the shepherd of Israel who feed themselves. And that is interesting because what was happening is that both the spiritual and spirit, the civil and spiritual leaders, God was rebuking and warning against when they did not look after their flock, but was looking after their own concern. Yes, the obvious question would be, should not the shepherd feed the flock? And godly shepherds must, of course, serve more to the benefit of the flock than to their own benefit. But that is not what was happening in Jerusalem at the time. Those who, have, who were called to lead, both civil and spiritual, were taking care of their own needs and neglecting the needs of the people. And it was the greed that existed in them that caused them to be behaving this way. And of course, this was an abomination, yes, to the Lord. Where there was weakness, the shepherd looked to the sheep for strength, which should not have been the case. Where there was illness, he looked to the sheep to be healed. Brokenness and woundness, he should be the one binding up, but that was not the case. He was taking from the people. And the result of the work of the unfaithful shepherd, of course, was the fact that the sheep would be scattered. Because if there is not a strong shepherd to keep the people together, 
then the people will be lost and the people will be scattered all over the place. And then when they are scattered, worse than that, there would be no one to seek and search for them. And so God promised to hold the unfaithful shepherds into account. But outside of that, he also promised that he would raise up for them a shepherd that would be one after his own heart. And that's where we find verse 17 this morning. God, he would raise up and protect his own flock and his own people. But before that, he gives them a word. Don't trample the pasture and foul the waters, he says. And that is interesting because he's addressing them, telling them, okay, so I will raise up for you a leader. But what is going to happen is you have to ensure, yes, that the unfaithful shepherds do not take over. Yes, and he spoke to the flock. The sins of the shepherd does not excuse the sins of the flock. Remember yesterday, we spoke about personal accountability before God. The fact that the parents could eat sour grapes and the children's teeth would not be set on edge because each was accountable to God for their own action. Yes, and so now, then, this first warning in verse 17 is for the flock. The sins of the shepherd does not excuse the sins of the flock. And he would judge between the sheep and the sheep and between the ram and the goat. God recognized that all sheep are not the same. And he reserved the right to make such a distinction. When considering, pardon me, when considering sheep abused by the shepherd, it may be that one sheep has no responsibility and another sheep has some responsibility and a third sheep has greater responsibility. So even though they are all sheep seeking to follow behind the good shepherd, all sheep are not created, all sheep are not created equal. Some take on more responsibility than others. And for us, these distinctions may be difficult to make, but God, who sees and knows all things, can tell the desire of our hearts. And I love it because you would think, so we are all here in morning prayer together. Yes, we are all here in morning prayer together. And what? You are here faithfully. I am here faithfully. Your neighbor that is commenting in the chat, they are here faithfully. But even though we are all here, our level of commitment to it, the level of what we get from it, the level of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, even though we are all here as sheep, could still be at different levels. We are at different stages of our faith journey. And the thing about it is while we are all sheep and while from the outside of the human eyes, we might all look alike as sheep, God knows the desires of our heart and he knows where we are. He knows what progress we are making. He knows where we falter. And so the Lord was saying to Israel, much as I do believe he's saying to us now, that he will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. There in verse 20, he says that. Yes? And you know what? Why? Verse 21. And I love verse 21. Verse 21 says, because you push with flank and shoulder. Yes? And it's interesting because... While God will protect his flock against renegade sheep, yeah, he promises to judge these renegade sheep, those who in some way indulge themselves to be better, to be the better ones in the flock. So he will separate sheep from sheep and he acknowledges that some sheep are going to be the pushers and forcers of themselves in the middle of the flock. And while they are his sheep, while they are following behind him, this type of behavior those who indulge themselves to try to be better than others, even though they are sheep, those ones would still be judged. He considers them renegade sheep. They are sheep, but they have gone astray. And then I thought about this, this song, All We Like Sheep Have Gone Astray. You know that song? I should have looked up that song for this morning. But you know what? Those sheep who become renegade sheep, they thought of themselves as the fat, mature, healthy sheep. But it might not be. You see, sometimes in our faith walk, those who feel that they know more Bible verse, those who feel that they have accomplished more in their spiritual walk, those who feel that the glory of the kingdom of God is solely by their credit alone, sometimes think themselves better than. And God noted that the way they threw their weight around, yes, and what they were doing 
is in thinking that they are better than the other sheep on the journey, they are actually abusing these other sheep and then forcing them to leave the pasture. And that is crazy because we have to understand that sometimes the number one cause of atheism are Christians. <laughs> that sounds funny, right? Sometimes the number one cause of people turning away from God are people who claim to be following God, but then do not live out what they claim with their lips through their actions in their lives. Sometimes those who believe that they have a strong relationship with God use their Bible to attack and assault those who are trying to develop their relationship with God. And instead of drawing them closer to God through their self-righteousness, they chase away the weaker sheep who are striving after the good of God. And we have to be mindful of that, brothers and sisters, that we do not get to think we are better than anyone else because we feel we know or have a stronger relationship with God than someone else. If you feel your relationship is stronger than somebody else's relationship with God, it is not your position to criticize them. It is your responsibility to use the strength you believe you have to raise them up, to help them to strengthen their relationship that they could be at the level where you are. Your knowledge and your relationship with God is not meant for you to lord it over anybody else. When you have and you know, it is not that you should feel better than anybody else. It is that you should use what you have and what you know for the greater good and the furtherance of the kingdom of God to draw others to him. And the Lord was saying, there are those among you who are butting, whoops, the wind is blowing my curtains, who are butting the weaker animals and instead of helping them to stay in the fold, you are scattering them further out of it than they need to be. And the Lord was saying, I am going to judge those ones. Yes? And therefore, I will save my flock. And they will no longer be prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. Because he knows. And he promises to rescue his precious flock. Not just from the outside, but also from other unfaithful, bully, renegade sheep within the same flock. Ironically, just as with the unfaithful shepherd, the renegade sheep made the other sheep pray and scattered them. Interesting, huh? That the shepherd who was supposed to protect was not protecting. The sheep who was supposed to be strong enough to guide the other sheep was not doing that. And so now, God once again was returning to the new covenant praising and perspective. He had in his mind the ultimate perfect gathering of Israel as a part of a new covenant. And he promises that he would set David over them as their shepherd. Yes? And that's it. I will save my flock, he says. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David. And David would be a good leader. He would feed them, he would feed them, and he would be a good shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. So this plain promise is most appropriately seen, not as a strange reference to Jesus as the Messiah, but it promises that King David will once again rule over Israel in the millennia. And of course, most people believe that this reference to David is really a reference to the Messiah, the son of David, which would be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Yes? And what a beautiful promise it is that one day a shepherd would come that would gather all his people together. Despite unfaithful shepherds, despite renegade and bullying sheep, despite the challenges of the world, this shepherd would gather all together. Yes? And what a beautiful promise it is. What a beautiful promise. God's promise to bring blessing and security to his flock is always a beautiful thing. I will make with them a covenant. This is how it ends here for us. I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild animals from the land so that they may live in the wild and sleep in the woods securely. All this again 
points towards the new covenant, a covenant of peace, that they could dwell in safety in the wilderness. And it would mean then that even those scattered out in the wild, they would still have the protection of God. Yes? They would still, even as the scattered flock, know God was there for them. Yes? And one day, they of course would be gathered to their own line, united, purified, faithful to Almighty God. And I love it. And I chuckled when I read the part that said showers of blessing because it was raining outside, no? And this was the refreshings of the spirit that we can expect, which is all, always compared to showers. And Isaiah did it in Isaiah 44. Yes? But the raining down of blessing from God, times of refreshment to restore them from the hardships they would be facing. Yes? Showers of blessing. And what? We pray for our showers of blessing all the time, that the heavens would open and God's blessing would rain down upon his people, upon his sheep, and that we could live in safety. Yes? And it's beautiful to go from a place where you are scattered and have no guidance to a place where you know that you are fully covered in the blessing of God, guided by his hand, even his hand alone. You know? The abundance of blessings and fertility and good things that comes when we are under the care of the Lord. And I love how it ends. Yes. They shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and save them from the hands of those who enslave them. I love it. Verse 29. I shall provide for them splendid vegetation so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land and no longer suffer the insults of the nation. And he repeated, they shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And it is important. It is important that we recognize that we are the flock of God. We are his flock. We are in his pasture. And he is our God. And this is great assurance that even to the erring shepherd and the renegade sheep, he still gives the assurance that he is their God. To the sheep that are being persecuted, he is their God. To the sheep who seem to be wandering because the shepherd is feeling, he is still their God. And as long as we are within Yahweh's pasture, we only need to respond to the chief shepherd's corrections and instructions in order to maintain his blessing. We need to recognize our place. We are God's. He is our God. We are his people. And that will be for us both our glory and the sense of our responsibility before God. That makes me happy. I am his sheep. I dwell in his pasture. And he is my God. Amen. We continue this morning with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We profess our faith saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collect for this morning is the collect for the seventh Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Now we say a prayer for our young persons. God our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we want to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Fendi Perez, Mr. Leroy Banner, and Miss Courtney Carrillo. We pray, lady and gentlemen, that you will indeed have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's mercies will continue to follow you all the days of your life. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember in our prayer, Ms. Judith, Ms. Ines, Ms. Bordy, Ms. Rose, Ms. Grace, Ms. Belin, Ms. Agnes, Ms. Norma, Ms. Mary, Ms. Marilyn, Ms. Louise, and Ms. Daniela. We pray for Ms. Monica, Ms. Eileen, Miss Tez, Miss Sonia, Miss Justine, Miss Yolanda, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Josephine, Miss Elena, Miss Peter. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Aislin, Miss Felicia, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, Miss Nina, Miss Edlene, and Miss Albina. We pray as well for Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Martha, Miss Dylan, Miss Julie, Miss Jessica, Miss Maria, Miss Althea, Miss Aniseta, Miss Dominique, and Miss John. We remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. William, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Oscar R., Mr. Philip, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Glenford, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Antoine, and Mr. Charles. We pray for Mr. Ellis Theo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Ian, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Damien, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dion, Mr. Chris, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, and Mr. Walter. We continue to pray for comfort and peace upon those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We 
remember and pray for the families of the following persons. We remember the family of Mr. Leon Hyde, the family of Miss Dorothy Mears, the family of Miss Linda Gore, the family of Mr. Samuel Griffith, the family of Mr. Normando Rabato, the family of Miss Kenja Middleton and Eden Paris. We pray for comfort and peace for all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for protection for our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, Tammy, Akua, Anwa, Ashley, Karina, and Courtney. We pray for our loved ones who are in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, and Charles at this time. We continue to pray for the enablement and protection of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We pray for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Joe Green, Arana, Sosa, Cuellar, and Joseph. We pray for Nurse McKinn, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Morel, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. We continue to pray for persons who have contracted or are infected with COVID-19. We pray for those in the various isolation wards. We pray for their loved ones who cannot be with them during this period of illness. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine for this disease. And indeed, we pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. We continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those industries most severely hit. We pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, all those who are in danger of sin. We pray indeed for God's provision and protection over all who are struggling to make ends meet financially at this time. We continue to pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions, and those considered the most vulnerable in our society. We continue to pray for our security forces, for our government, persons in positions of public trust and authority. We pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. Indeed, we pray for the members of the international community who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19, remembering the nation of India as well as the island of Trinidad and Tobago at this time. We continue to pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters. Yesterday, I believe it was, there was the releasing of the names of the, the, the names for the potential storms for our hurricane season that will begin in a few weeks. We continue to pray for God's protection over ourselves and our region and we remember the recovery efforts of persons in the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados and St. Lucia at this time. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining us for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing to be able to greet a brand new day, and it is my privilege to be able to begin this new day with you in prayer to Almighty God. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for the remainder of the day. Today is Friday, and I have good news, and I have not so good news. Today at noonday, we will be having noonday prayers. Mm -hmm. And this will be followed by evening prayer at 5.30. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there will be no prayer and praise party. One, because, well, we have to adjust our time for prayer and praise party now that evening prayer is back on schedule. But two, because Rev, have, Rev has an important meeting that begins at 4 
that she is almost certain will get her home at 8 o'clock at night. But that's fine. All for the glory of God. So unfortunately, we will not be having any prayer and praise party today. But after evening prayer at 5.30, we do have Compline at 9 p.m. to close off our broadcast day. Mm. I want to thank those of you who joined the bishop yesterday for um, the Bible study. I was in another meeting and could not make it to Bible study. I feel like my life is all meetings these days. Huh? All for the glory of God. But you know what? I want to thank those of you who did join. I am sure it was a powerful and moving Bible study indeed. Above all else, I want to thank you, yes, for your continual support and work of the Ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Queens. Thank you so very much. We'll conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close things off close things off this morning with one entitled Come Live in the Light. As a sheep of God, we are called to follow where he leads and he leads to the light. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day, a bright day despite the overcast skies that might be outside. Come, let us live in the light of God. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now.